Welcome once again to my channel. My name is Touch Kumarga, and on today's video, we are going to be looking at how to overcome depression. How to overcome depression. If you're new on this channel, consider subscribing and share this video with loved ones, people who might be in a situation whereby this could be a therapy for them to overcome depression for a lifetime. And also consider subscribing and click the like button. Turn on the notification that so that you don't miss any of our new videos. So you are welcome to our video today. Remember, what we are looking at today on our video is how to overcome depression. If you have not been through that situation, it will be hard for you to explain to someone who has been through that difficulty of overcoming being depressed. At some point in life, you have challenges that could force you down into that state of being depressed. I have been through it myself and I can share with you how bizarre it can be if you are not able to put yourself under control and find solution to set yourself completely free from being depressed. Now, there was a time in my life that I went through depression and it was as a result of um, a conversation I had with a loved one and it was as if the person just uh, picked me up and washed me completely with his words. Those words were words that made me see myself as if I was the worst fellow on the planet Earth. You know, for some people, such thing can force you down to the point whereby you decide all, of, all by yourself to take your life. That was the state I was at that point in time. My eyes turned black. People looked at me as they saw me. They were wondering, what was wrong? What has gone wrong with you? But they could not understand that I was depressed at that point in time. But in the process of going through that depression, I don't know, the word of God came to me clearly. And at that point in time, I realized that, man, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just that people have their own perception concerning your life. Some people feel that if you fit into their desires, that you are man enough. But once they see you standing up to what you believe, and maintaining that disciplined life that you've learned over a period of time, they will feel that probably you're selfish, that you're wicked, that you do not care about them. And immediately that word of God caught across into my heart, a song welled up from within. So I started singing that song. I sang it for well over 30 minutes. And when that song went through from my lips into my heart, up to heaven, it was as if the burden of that depression was lifted off my shoulder like a bag of cement. And that was the end of our experience of being depressed. That depression ended at that point in time. So I started drawing lessons. So there could be a word that can actually force you down into depression. Then there should be a counter words that you need to set yourself free from that predicament and the bondage of depression. And that is what we are going to be looking at subsequently. Now, one thing you should know is that there is power in words you speak. And the words you hear also have power. So one thing you should be careful about is the words you allow to pass through your ear gates. Because when you pass when those words pass through your ear gates and they enter into your heart, they could build up a bondage of depression, mountain of depression that will keep you perpetually down that you want to take your life that was exactly what happened to me so tip number one be very careful the words 
that pass through your ears into your heart, they could be as dangerous as poison. Because when they force you depress those words, then you might be forced to take your life all by yourself. Why? Because you have felt that you are worthless. Because people have given you the image of yourself that you are not. But they want you to become that person in that picture. So have, be very careful about what you allow into your ears. Number two, be careful who speaks to you. Who is speaking to you? Who do you allow to speak to you as a mentor? Because the person who speaks to you might have a good intention, but not well presented. And when they are not well presented, they could force you down into depression. I know sincerely that that loved ones of mine had a good intention. He wanted to pass a message across to me, but because he did not know how to pass that message, instead of the message being constructive enough to make me learn one or two things and you know adjust the way I live my life, it became disastrous that it forced me into that depressed situation. So, number one, be careful the words that you allow to pass from your ear gate into your heart. Number two, be careful of who you allow to speak to you at any point in time. Because even if they have a good intention, but by the way their words are constructed, it might be destructive in nature. And when it's destructive, it causes a poisonous viper that will make you to take your life via depression. And that is not good and healthy for your own personality. Right. The third one is your company. Because despite the fact that, okay, somebody may have spoken to you, or there is nobody that is speaking to you, per se, personally, but the company you keep, what you hear them say, maybe by the time they profile themselves and their family, and you weigh yourself, you measure up yourself, and you discover that you're not living up to what they have painted to you as a, as a model family, as a model lifestyle, then you might be forced to look at your parents as the worst enemy. Because they were not able to bring you up with such affluence due to probably their background and um, the, the, their financial capacity. Then you feel that they were guilty of the kind of life you see yourself living. Not being able to pay bills. Not being able to flaunt you know, wealth like your, 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 your peers. Then you might feel depressed as a result so your company is very key stay away from such company the company of fools can destroy you so search for the wise ones make them part of your company with that you will save yourself from this poisonous viper called depression another one is the media you know, when you go into the social media, you see a whole lot of things, a lot a, a pictures of people printing to you that they are wealthy, that they are living a happy life. And if per adventure, like you fell into the category of people who cannot afford to live such, you know, a life of flamboyancy, then you start feeling guilty. And when you start feeling guilty, you start thinking about it. When you watch and see how they model themselves and you are not able to even pay to put yourself through school you can't even afford to you know hustle and get yourself together to go through the 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 four walls of the university to live a better life create a better life for yourself and your loved ones such things could be disastrous so what you watch on the social media the eye gate is powerful they could be a distraction to you focusing on your dream in life there's a better dream god has for you so what i'm telling you is the only way you can avoid this viper called 
depression. So be very careful not to be a victim. The very last one I wanted you to note, which is not too far from what we have discussed from the first to the fourth thereabout, is the fact that you have to be careful what you read on the newspaper, what you read on the news. You know, because there are stories that are capable of forcing you to take your life by force. Because those stories could be devastating. Maybe you hear stories of violence, stories of insecurity. You decide, okay, instead of me allowing myself to be a victim, because those stories can bring in fear. It can put you down. It can make you to see the earth as a giant. As Goliath, why you are David, you are helpless. You see yourself helpless that you can't help yourself. And you'll be forced to take your life by force. That's 